Hi guys, this is Toby, the guy who is sharing his knowledge with the community. We are back in our Rock Vapor Classic uh, training video series and today it's part 4 or part, part 4 for our Russian colleagues. Um, yeah, today we are talking about snappy hex mesh preparation. So what do we need? Uh, now in addition for executing snappy hex mesh what we did already we created our fluid region domain check we triangulated our fluid region domain check and now we want to mesh the the area or the the, the fluid the volume inside with snappy hex mesh and therefore we still need a few things the first thing is we need a background mesh and we will create this background mesh right now and very simple. So nothing changed. We have these STL files which we created the last time and I simply open Salome and load the previous created file named surface tree angulation. I go to this geometry module and what we see here is our pipe. So now snappy hex mesh, if you don't know how snappy hex mesh works, snappy hex mesh needs let's say a already discretized volume and then it checks which volume element is intersected by these surfaces. If these surfaces are intersected by these cells, if the user say, okay, please snappy hex mesh, now refine here, snappy hex mesh will refine. And then at the end, after this refinement is done, there are two refinements, shell refinement and uh, region refinement. So shell is just outer shells like here. Uh, or surface refinement and shell refinement, it's like that way. The surface refinement is like the representative surfaces and the shell refinement is if you have like a box or something like this. Okay, um, and then if this uh, meshing procedure, so this splitting of cells is done, Snappy is cutting out all the cells which are not used or not within your volume here. Okay. And therefore Snappy needs a background mesh. To create this background mesh, this is very simple. We make a bounding box here around this. By the way, I think um, it would be interesting just to create uh, an application which is doing this. Okay. I will think if I will implement this in uh, Salome, uh, Snappy X Mesh somewhere. Okay, this bounding box represents now a, a box uh, which encloses the geometry. And in order to, again, this is important, not to get in conflict with Snappy X Mesh, do the following create a center of mass, use this bounding box, scale it. Maybe scale it with uh, all direction x, y, z or scale it into different area uh, alignments. So x, y, z differently and use this uh, central point. So what it is actually doing, it just scales. So this is the original background mesh or bounding box. So this uh, box we created and scale it with a parameter of depending on your size. Make it enlarge it a, a bit. The reason for that is if you do have, so I will make this a bit smaller because the X, uh, the set, the set direction is larger. So to, to keep like uh, the properties. So the reason for that, making it a bit larger is if you have a patch, a straight do we have anything here yeah for example this 
this face on top which is aligned to the Cartesian coordinate system so the surface normal vectors point to the y direction so if the background or this bounding box is lying on top of this snappy hex mesh has for any reason I have no idea a problem to snap these points to these surface features um, to these the corners I don't know why, I have no idea why Snappy Hexman is not able to do that, but it will do and probably it will not find that this patch is named inlet. It will probably find half of the faces to be inlet, the half, the other half is uh, default faces. I have no idea um, and I don't have time for investigating that. But this trick will help you to overcome this. The next step is now you have your scaled box and the next step is you create a mesh and it is just a hexahedral mesh and probably I choose here hexahedral so it will make the settings automatically. Only in the wire discretization I say local length and I say I want to discretize each centimeter I want to have a cell. So each centimeter is a bit very coarse and you already see that it would mean that one two three is three centimeters pipe and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten centimeters is the pipe so okay the dimensions will fit. Um, in any case for me this is too coarse so I will go to two millimeter and with this mesh we are going to um, mesh with snappy hex mesh. So this is now our background mesh. You can also achieve this with block mesh. So the only thing you need is to have a background mesh for snappy hex mesh. So you export it as UNV file. I store it in this CAD folder. I will also save this file. I exit and it's done. So now we have in addition this background mesh. Now you can convert this UNV file into an open foam readable file. Um, you have to load your open foam environment and then you just say ideas UNV to foam and then you say the file you need to convert. Probably I'm not sure if this works because open foam applications need commonly the control dict and sometimes also the FV schemes and solutions files. We will see. So as I mentioned it tells us cannot find file, training, internal flow, system control link. So if you are not familiar with that, um, you just have to create a new folder and you have to put an empty, a, a file inside system, which is named control dict. Or the better way is you go to foam tutorials then you go it doesn't matter to incompressible simple foam pits daily system control dict and you put it there so you just copy a file from an existing open foam tutorial into this folder now let's do it again as you can see, essential value for keyword surface is not set in functions entry. This is not related to the, con uh, to the conversion, it is more related to the control dict because here in the tutorial there is something we don't need. I just remove it and now we can convert this file. When it is converted you get a new constant poly mesh folder with the boundary faces, neighbor, owner and point files. Then you can check it in parallel view. For this you either run 
para foam but i don't install this and if you use para view you have to create a dummy file dummy the only thing which is important is the ending dot foam okay now you can open para view and then you can load this dummy file it will just give the information to para view look here is a foam case we are loading and now you can also see the edges and this is our background mesh this is the first point you need for executing snappy hex mesh the second point is you need the stl file which does not have to be an stl file it can also have be a other formats i'm not sure about them but um, uh, just check some snappy hex mesh dictionaries uh, it can also read different formats i think dot files and op no object files can be used um, it does not have to be a stl file okay so snappy hex mesh if you execute snappy hex mesh it is looking for the FV schemes so we need also this file and it does not matter what is inside this file right now so we just copy these FV schemes into systems we execute snappy hex mesh again it tells us well we need also the FV options then we take the FV, uh, FV solutions I mean into this system and of course snappy hex mesh will also read his own snappy hex mesh dictionary so we need a snappy hex mesh dictionary for this purpose so we will just copy um the snappy hex mesh from tutorials mesh snappy hex mesh motorbike system snappy hex mesh we will put it into system and now snappy hex mesh should be possible to be executed however the sys dictionary the snappy hex mesh dictionary we copied already here um so this file we we copied um does have wrong settings so if we execute it it will tell us that the file the the geometry file which is set here is not found and uh, first of all it is complaining that another file is not found so we uh, also put the mesh uh, quality dict into this now we execute it again and you see it tells you cannot find tree surface mesh um, at constant tree surface motorbike so far so good this um, is everything you need right now for snappy hex mesh as you can see um, there are a few files um, needed for executing snappy hex mesh it is the control dict it is the fv schemes fv solutions however these two files they could be empty uh, in terms of not empty files but in terms of that here this could be empty these dictionaries and this could be empty i hope i don't talk bullshit right now i will just delete all these entries and we don't need this at all so yeah so snappy hex mesh is also executed here maybe you can also put dummy files in the only thing which is, is obvious that it has to be there is the control dict um, with the settings here because snappy hex mesh takes uh, writing um, informations um, out of this dict okay um, last but not least as you can see snappy hex mesh always checks the geometry you you say um, here in the snappy hex mesh dict I don't want to dig into that so in this geometry you will always find some files 
um, that, that you tell Snappy Hex Mesh, look, this is my geometry I want to mesh, and this geometry always is located in constant tree surface. Therefore, we need also a constant tree surface folder. And inside this folder, our representative geometry has to be placed. Therefore, you can make a copy of your STL. We named it combined STL and we put it into constant tree surface. Now it looks like that. So for snappy hex mesh to execute it and work with it, you need first other way around. Your STL file or object file in the folder constant tree surface. Done. Check. You need furthermore for execution of snappy hex mesh relevant files which are located in the system folder. So you need the control deck file, the FV solutions and the FV schemes files. Furthermore, Snappy Hex Mesh needs his own control dictionary, which is called Snappy Hex Mesh Dict. And with this special regard, Snappy Hex Mesh Dict also, um, or snap, while executing Snappy Hex Mesh, it also wants to have this mesh quality dict. The reason why is because in Snappy Hex Mesh Dict, at the end, it tells, look, there is a file called mesh quality dict. If you take the, the whole content of this mesh quality dict and push it into the snappy hex mesh dict, there is no need to have this mesh quality dict and it is obsolete, of course. And at the end for snappy hex mesh, you need a background mesh, where, uh, which is actually a pure hexahedral mesh. I forgot to say that it is a pure hexahedral mesh. And you can either create it via Salome, as I showed you. You can also use block mesh for this purpose. You can also use Blender for this purpose. Uh, there is like a Blender plugin which uh, creates a block mesh file, I guess, um, or was or is really creating a snappy hex uh, open foam readable file. I don't know. There is a plugin for that. Um, doesn't matter, but you need like a pure hex mesh, just we, we say background mesh because it's like in the background. It's not in the background actually, but it's like a mesh, like which is the initial size or this, it's the initial mesh for meshing with snappy hex mesh. This is the base mesh and these three things you need. And the next thing is we are really diving into snappy hex mesh and mesh these things. And probably I want to show you some nice tricks and features where you can uh, make local refinements and interesting refinement parameters with or, or parameter settings with snappy hex mesh. Very, very um, impressive what snappy hex mesh offers here. Uh, probably also CF mesh, but I'm unfortunately I don't have experience with snap uh, with CF mesh. But I want to give you all my experience re regarding snappy hex mesh and to to um, yeah to calm you down that snappy hex mesh works. And at the end, a big a big problem what snappy hex mesh has is the late generation. Yes, I know that. Um, maybe you don't need that, um, but most of the parameters Snappy Hex Mesh offers um, are not really needed for beginners, uh, even for advanced users. But how to knowing these parameters is always uh, very very good to have uh, in your mind. Therefore, I think we are finished for this training series. I hope you enjoyed it. You get something out of that. And take care, guys. Keep foaming. See you in the fifth episode. And then we are really diving into open foam and meshing with Snappy Hex Mesh. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you like it, like it, share it, whatever.
ください。